Yo yo! So it's uh, about two degrees. Um, top of this hill is actually uh, no frost, but there's been frost everywhere else, so it's obviously just a little bit warmer over here. Still bloody cold though, but it's lovely blue skies. Bit of a haze as you can see. So I'm going to take a chance to have a flight, because um, this is going to be the last flight I'm going to have a chance of having for about four months. Uh, I did my knee in. Um, about six months ago, ACL. Again, I've had one of them done. This one, this one's went twice and been done. This one's done once and been done. So it needs done again. Um, so it's all braced up just now, but uh, it's it's not stable. So it's going in for an operation, and that will keep me from flying probably for about three or four months. So I thought I'd take a take a day off and get one flight in before uh, before I'm out of action for the next four months or so. Grass is really wet, which can't be helped. There's not a whole lot of wind. It's supposed to be coming from the west and northwest, which will be kind of this way. But uh, you never can tell here, you know, you can see there's kind of hills and stuff like that, and sometimes it just kind of does weird things here. We need to get the windsock out and see what it's doing. I can feel a little bit in my face. Uh, and a warm up, you know, it's just, you need to wrap up on a day like this. It's a sort of trying to put on as many clothes as you can, but as late as you can, because if you put all your clothes on now, you're sweating like a pig before you get up in the air. I can start to feel it now, I can feel it in my face. Because it's a westerly, it's the opposite direction from what I usually go. So the wind's pushing me towards the coast, um, and the coast's usually where I want to go and fly. Well, that is what I want to go and fly. I usually prefer the wind to be pushing me back rather than pushing me out. Um, but you know, Vegas can't be choosers. So let's get the stuff out and uh, see how we go. tip on a cold day, just stick your battery down your pants and uh, just warms it up in case you need it. I'm hoping the sun will catch this and just warm it up a bit. I'm saving how to change the battery. If I need to, I've got a warm one. So, set this guy up then. If you have got a, a nitro like this, you might want to do something like this. A, I don't like the way that there's big spaces here. Um, if you've, you've got your, your throttle in your hand, in my case it's my right hand, and if you dangle down like that, your right, you know, the throttle can come through here, the throttle cable, the throttle cable comes through here, or your hand comes through here, whoosh, your hand's off. Um, so, it's just not a very good design, that bit, but generally it's a good motor, but I don't like that. So I usually just put, just put a few, few of these across here and it just stops, oh, no, it stops but minimises the chances of um, cable coming through. Another thing uh, worth saying about the Nitro um, that I've noticed compared to the uh, my old Bailey V5 um, because it's got such a lot less thermal mass, you know the engine's so small you need to be a bit careful when you let it tick over for a long time because the engine gets cold again and then, uh, so for example if you're up, up height and uh, you just want it to tick over and float down the ground maybe from 2,000, 3,000 feet and then go really low and then put the power on and just sort of go along the ground at 40 or 50 feet or something it can catch you out because uh, you know, the engine's been ticking over, it's been cooling down. You get down to 30 feet, you try and put the throttle on, and uh, just the engine just bolts down because it's cold again. So, um, it's just worth mentioning that, you know, if you've got a little engine like this, if you're doing something like that, just make sure that you know that, you know, the engine's probably cooling down. So, as you go down, just give it a wee blip now and again, and before you're going to really rely on it, 
warm up. Uh, when you're two or three hundred feet, you know, make sure the regs are there so that they're there when you need it. Ready, I think, for a quick start. See that? Just sounds like a flat battery, but it's not. It's fully charged. It's just cold. So this is where the old pants battery is going to be required. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to fit it just now because I've fitted just now, and then I can time we get up there and the wing set up. It's going to be cold again. So I'm going to take the battery out here. I'm going to keep the, the spare one in my pants and we'll fit it when we need to fit it and hope so it's coming from uh, it's supposed to be our west northwest and in fact it's a southwest we'll get behind it we'll have a feel see what it's doing up here I'd rather it was southwest because I can go down this way. But uh, what I think we'll do is we'll set up a bit back here. And if it does go down to the west, we want a bit of a run before we go down the hill here. So I'm going to need to set up a little bit over, over here. So much is moving about, it'll be a bit, to be honest, it's going to be a bit tricky to know how we're going to set up here. Hmm. So uh, I think we'll set it up and um, Could be one of these days where you could be one of these days where you have to move up a little bit, I think. Moving about, you know. It's moving about. We just have to see how it goes. You know, I think I'm gonna move the windsock. Because uh I know me and uh, if I don't I'm going to do a precision fly, take off straight into it. Okay, I'm going to move it back a little bit further. Oh, pants battery in. Get these layers of clothing on now. This is where you start to hope that you really get off the first time because if you don't, you'll be sweating like an absolute bastard. It's a good amount of wind there. So, just gonna go for it. Back. Well, it's plenty cold. There's quite a lot of mist. I uh, kind of um, haze. I was hoping it might burn off, but I think it'll be the afternoon before it burns off, so... Uh, 
I'll keep an eye on my speed. But I think we should be okay to uh, to go east a bit. As long as I just watch them, not going too fast. At the moment, I'm doing 35. So the wind's maybe about 10 miles an hour, which is fine. So to give you an example, we're on fast trim now, and uh, with the reaction on the dip steering, you have to be pulling it right down, and then right down, you'll be able to very slightly turn to one side or the other. It's very slow. With this, it's immediate. Even the slightest little tip here, and I'm moving. And if I pull it quite a lot, I'm really turning quite quickly. Which is a really big difference. Well, eating gloves on now. It's nice, it's just there. Uh, I thought it would be a lot less hazy. So I'm just up about a thousand feet now because I'm just uh, I'm just about to hit um, amp switch. So I built up area. I always go to the the south because it's mostly parks. Um, so lots of opportunities to land out. Um, but obviously, you know, stay over a thousand feet anyway. And uh, yeah. Very smooth. These are uh, motorcycle gloves. Uh, and what I do is I just uh, I've got a big lipo battery that I just use with them. Uh, so the battery's big enough to give me uh, to give me two hours of heat. These about 35 watts. So we're at uh, 1800 feet, 1900 feet. AGL. Uh, but, uh, well, Ipswich is pretty much sea level anyway, so, you know, we're about 1900 feet up. And we're doing about 30 miles an hour, so about 8 miles an hour wind, so not too bad at all. We'll, um, we'll go down, lose, lose height now, uh, go up the Royal Bridge and then follow the coast a little bit. So I'm just going to sort of go on and tick over, just let myself gradually lose that height and then go over the other well. 500, 600 feet over the bridge and then lose some weight on the other side. Just what I'm talking about, I'm just putting the revs on a little bit, just warms the engine up a bit so that when I actually need it, I know that I'll have the power. So if we we'll drop it down, we can uh, go on a slow trip. So just go in there. Get on the breaky breakies. And then we can uh, do some scooting about. You might get some height actually, just dip over to the other side. So I'm sure I'm talking to the converted, but you want to cross a bit of water like that, you want to be high enough that you can glide to the other side. Uh, so, you know, it's about 600 feet, something like that. Uh, so, I just like to take it really safely. So I'll go really high, well, a thousand feet or so, and then pull across. I'll also take this opportunity to just turn around and see what the wind's doing. A little bump in there.
Draw straight back into it now. I'm there about 20 miles. Of, oh. So I'm just going to pull across now. Got plenty of plenty of height. Man, I can just start losing the height now. There's a couple down the other side. There's a helicopter up there, Apache. Probably wouldn't be able to see it. Too uh, too small, but straight in front of me just now. It's about uh, 2,000 feet away. A height of 1,000 feet. Probably hasn't seen me, but it's it's going towards Felix now, so. We've got an Apache airbase just uh, for a water shop quite close to my home, about six miles away, so you get quite a lot of Apache helicopters. Yeah, he's just going straight out towards Felix though, so. Ah, he's turning round, Mr. Apache. So I'm going to just keep an eye on him, he's straight ahead of me now and he's turning round and he's coming back this way, which is nice of him. So I'm going to just keep down a bit, he's now heading directly for me. Hopefully not getting a lock on his muscles. Hopefully he's seen me, but he's, he's high up in the about a thousand feet up. Right. Never assume. Right, it looks like he's hovering, having a good steer. He's right in the sun now, I can't see him for worth a toffee. I'd love to turn around once he's by me and have a look. Yeah, he's slowing to hover. I'm having a good old look at me, I think. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you get some lovely patterns in the, uh, the silt here. Almost like kind of like Mandelbrot sets. You can see below me. It's quite cool. So below me, you've got Felix Dole Ferry Terminal, Container Terminal, stretching into the distance. Um, every single one of those containers, 24 feet, you know, it's like little bits of Lego. Thousands of them. Tens of thousands of Two thousand feet again, just over Felix though. And then we'll just drop down and fly along the coast a little bit. Just a little bit bumpy. All along this coast, uh, there are these things called Bartello Towers, sort of big uh, cylinder of stone. They were all built, I think, around Napoleonic times um, to protect Britain. And uh, they're every, oh, 100, well, 100 metres, 200 metres, all the way up the coast. Quite a lot of them have been. Uh, converted into homes now 
Uh, but some of them have been left, you know, and you can go and look at them. We're coming up to a couple of them here. Some of the ones you don't see because they're kind of in land a little bit and they've been congrafted so that they actually look more like houses, but... So we're coming up to a couple of them in uh, a little place called Felix Snow Ferry, which has um, got a little uh, passenger ferry, but it's just, you know, for people and bicycles. They take you over the little bit of the river here um, to the other bit of the, the, the Ness. It's quite good in the summer because you can uh, do quite a big cycle around the countryside. Otherwise, it's quite difficult to get to this little bit on the other side of the river. So here's one of these Bartello towers here coming up. And this is one where it's just been left, um, you know, so you can, uh, as it was, sort of thing. And then the next one we come to is somebody's house. I'll just lose a little bit of height here so you can see it. So yeah, you know, they, are, they were basically the um, defence against the volume. You can see them there. I'll whip it whip round and give you a look. See where the uh, bookhouse would have been at the top. a little bit pukey. Uh, it's quite uh, thrown me around quite a lot actually. That was okay. Uh, cold nose, apart from that, it's alright. The only thing was, uh, on the way back especially, oh, really bumpy. Really thrown me around a lot and uh, I'd say didn't have a motion sickness tablet. Usually if I expect it to be bumpy, I'll have a wee motion sickness tablet. I just didn't expect it to be bumpy. No. Oh, I'm sure, all over the place. I felt like I was going to be sick most of the time. So, the last hour of that, not so pleasant to be honest. Just constantly feeling a bit. Yeah. But, good flight, generally, apart from that. <laughs> and as I say, that's it now for about four months, I reckon. Get the offer about three weeks. I reckon, I reckon three or four months. Physio and uh, gym and weights and stuff. Before I get back to being able to fly again, so. It was good to just get one in this year and, you know, at least we've done that. <laughs>